the PIR motion detector. There are a lot of misconceptions about how they work and what they can actually see. This video uses illustrations and footage to demonstrate how a PIR works. I've gone above and beyond to create a video designed so that anyone can understand it. With over two months of recording and editing, it's the type of video that you can expect from the Mr. Matt and Mr. Che channel. After the intro, a brief history, the sensor, the lens, PIR facts, the noise it makes, false positives, and of course, in great detail how it works. Please stay tuned. The PIR motion detector has been around since the early 1980s. Over the years, there have been hundreds, possibly thousands of designs. They are used for a whole host of applications, from flushing toilets, switching lights on, to detecting intruders. Before we get going, here is a brief history. The first type was from the late 1970s, the microwave motion detector. But the problem was the radio waves emitted penetrated thin walls, causing false alarms if it wasn't positioned and adjusted correctly. Then came the ultrasonic motion detector. This is almost a speaker and microphone system. The speaker transmitted continuous ultrasonic sounds, inaudible to the human ear, and the microphone detected differences in the sound bouncing back to it from moving objects, using the Doppler effect. It generated less false alarms than microwave, but the early types were huge and ugly. Imagine having this in the corner of your living room. The 1980s came the introduction of the PIR motion detector. Less false alarms than microwave and ultrasonic, and better at detecting motion reliably, and at greater distances. On the circuit board is this, pyroelectric sensor. Every PIR has one. For some PIRs, it was blatantly obvious where it was. In other models, it's rear wood facing, then a mirror reflects it forwards. But this is no ordinary mirror, it's broken into segments. Each segment is like a little lens that targets the pyroelectric sensor towards the area it's protecting. Each segment also zooms the sensor across the room for maximum range. The lens also creates gaps within the detection pattern. Detection area, no detection area, detection area, no detection area, and so on, all the way across the room. Some PIR detectors had the sensor facing forwards, then a plastic lens fitted over it. Although this is cheaper to manufacture, it's not as accurate, precise, and sometimes not quite as sensitive as the rearward mirror type, as the plastic lens can be distorted, compared with the solid mirror type that's also protected within the unit. Both lens systems work in exactly the same way. PIR facts. A PIR does not transmit anything. This is in exception to this device, which is a Dualtech. This has a PIR and also a microwave. But today we are just talking about the PIR element itself and back to these old devices which were around long before the Dualtech was invented. A PIR detects motion by sensing rapid changes of radiated energy via its lens system, which I'm coming back to in a great detail in a moment. A PIR is not a camera. It cannot visualize the room. It also cannot detect where the motion occurred or the direction of it. A PIR is more sensitive to you walking across its detection pattern rather than towards it. The output relay is kept energized until motion is detected. A power loss or disconnection of power results in a continuous alarm output. Over the years, the clicky relay that signals motion to the control panel has evolved into a completely silent design.
There are different types of lenses. For most applications, detectors have this multi-zone lens. For normal room coverage, the upper part detects motion across the main part of the room. This midsection detects motion further down, nearer to the unit. The lower section aims down for even closer detection, but not underneath. And some detectors have what's known as an anti-creep zone that detects motion directly underneath. These PIR detectors used for outside lighting just have segments all over the place. The size of each segment limits the range, but it has far more detection zones than a conventional indoor PIR. These are angry looking devices. This one looks a lot more friendly though. The lens systems are quite fascinating. By facing a very small red LED into the lens, right in front of the pyroelectric sensor, it shines out of the lens to help us see and understand how the detection areas work. Remember, a PIR does not transmit light, infrared light, or anything. Every object emits some kind of radiated infrared energy. The warmer the object, the more energy it radiates. This is invisible to the human eye but very visible to the pyroelectric sensor on the circuit board of the PIR. When a warm object moves in front of a wall, the PIR can easily detect the difference in radiated energy from the wall it was once looking at. All the segments of the lens target this energy at the pyroelectric sensor on the circuit board. Basically, this generates a reading or a value which rises and falls. Without a lens, if Mr. Che were to move very close, the radiated energy reading rises. Moving away, the reading falls. So you could develop a motion detector using this alone. But it would not be very sensitive. Mr. Che enters the room. The reading rises, but not very much at this distance. Only movement close to the device would have any use. Because the unit cannot visualise where the motion is, the reading would just gradually rise and fall unless a drastic movement was made. Therefore, the lens plays a very important part. Watch what happens when you move across the room. I can see you, I can't see you. I can see you, I can't see you. Here is a camera placed in exactly the same position as the pyroelectric sensor facing into the lens. Instead of a heat source, I'm illustrating this part of the video using a light so that we can understand how a heat source would be detected as it crosses the detection pattern. When a rapid rise or fall is detected, this is known as a pulse. Some PIRs can be adjusted for how many pulses it takes before the unit activates. This is a bit like a sensitivity setting. One pulse creates a very sensitive detector, whereas three pulses requires the person to move further across the room. If we look in a little more detail at the pyroelectric sensor, there are actually two or four elements inside it. Each of these gives a different reading, but when there is no motion, each element cancels the other one out. One of them gives a positive and the other gives a negative signal. For simplicity, we will concentrate on two element pyroelectric sensor design. Watch as the heat source moves across the detection zone of the lens. One element receives a reading slightly ahead of the other creating two readings per segment of the lens. This also helps reduce false alarms, as both a positive and a negative needs to be generated before a pulse is recognised. A pulse is recognised as detected motion by the imbalance of the positive and negative reading. If only one is received, or both rise and fall gradually, this is ignored. In slow motion, here is an illustration of the positive and negative readings from a couple of the segments of the lens. In reality, positive and negative readings are generated across the whole lens, creating far more frequent and quicker pulses than shown here. How does a PIR deal with other sources of radiated energy that could generate a false activation? This is a radiator, which is part of a heating system here in the UK. When hot, this gives off high levels of radiated energy. This is easily noticeable by a PIR. Shown here with the lens missing, the pyroelectric sensor would still pick up the radiator, but more likely by both positive and negative elements at the same time. But more importantly, 
positive and negative readings balance themselves out, and the high reading is totally ignored. Not forgetting that this reading has to rise and fall sharply to generate a pulse, which is not possible in this situation. The PIR lens may aim the positive and negative elements from the pyroelectric sensor into slightly different areas of the room. If the readings from these elements were to imbalance, this may actually give a high average reading. But a pulse is not achieved, because gradual rises and falls, like from this radiator, are disregarded. Any new average reading is then learnt as the new base level for detecting pulses. So there we have it, the conventional PIR motion detector. It detects motion from rapid changes of radiated energy received from objects moving across the individual segments of the lens system. I have many other PIR videos where I strip them down, shine LEDs into the lens system and examine them. To me, the older the design, the more interesting they are. The playlist is coming up in the top right. I spend a lot of time and effort making these videos. My objective is quality, not quantity. If you've enjoyed watching this video, then please consider subscribing to the Mr. Matt and Mr. J channel to see other quality videos as soon as they are uploaded. Thank you very much for watching.